Welcome to the Film Garage 208 podcast. My name is Sarah and this is Daniel. Hello. Hello. Today we have with us Natalie and she is the photographer owner behind Parker and Co. Photography. Yes. Yes. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. Thanks for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. It's a little confusing because you said your name is Natalie. Yes. And it's Parker and Co. So where did that come from? Parker is my daughter's name. Uh, okay. She's, I have. How old is she? She will be two in April. Oh, okay. And I'm obviously very pregnant. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> um, I have, and then I have an older boy, Hudson. Oh, okay. But I started the business after having Parker and it was mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah. You know? So it's okay. going to be three babies. Yeah. It'll be three babies in May. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's exciting though. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, no, you excited. say exciting. She says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Can hear the pause. She said it, not me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think everyone playing. agrees with you. And I was like, "You're almost there. Are you so excited to be done being pregnant?" And I'm like, mm, "Yeah, but then I'll have a baby." Then I'm like, have that's more hard. hard. Like, it's not like it just it's ends. hard too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't get easier. So. That's true. Yeah, I wonder if it'll be true, like where they say when you get to three kids. It's like a shift. Yeah, I've heard that but three is the hardest. <laughs> is it? And then after three, you can do any. So oh, I can have like 10 more. Three. You know? Mm. Not it's my like plan. Once you break that limit, that's yeah. you're home free. Yeah, it's like yeah. three is insane and you can't, like, it doesn't matter anymore after that. Right. Yeah. So just, you just have feral children. Are you going to have 10 more? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no, maybe is that what you're one. Saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe one. one more. Good for maybe. you, man. No, no, no. It's not me. We'll see. If Parker's as crazy as Hudson, no, we will have more. And then if this baby's as crazy as those, yeah. yeah. So was your first child like really calm and then now the second one's like really crazy? Um, Because I've heard that also where they like it, have the first like angel baby and then the second the baby comes oh, in. Oh, like, yeah. Ah. Parker's like, <laughs> she's like crazy. Like she's straight up crazy. Mm -hmm. And Hudson's like really sensitive. My older boy, he's like really sensitive. He can also be crazy, but Parker's like feral she's she's crazy <laughs> she keeps you on your toes oh she does she does oh i feel it we have a spicy child also she's almost two in yep. june oh, okay so same, same age. pretty pretty close there yeah it's a fun age though it is it is a fun age but she's definitely crazy like she's she's the one attacking other babies at gymnastics oh. all the time <laughs> good yeah, for her she's... hold up for her yeah own. i mean she's gonna be strong i'm proud of her yeah so is your business as crazy as parker <laughs> um, it can be. <laughs> so let's hear about your business. It totally can uh -huh. be. I've, um, yeah, I, I kind of decided to do a lot all at one time. Oh yeah. And cause I just started my business last year. Like it's been one year since my first photo shoot actually. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Like, Were you doing photography before that? Yeah. No. Tell wow. us about your history. Yeah. Let's hear no, about it. No, I, um, I graduated in elementary education. Okay. And I taught for a while and then I had my first baby, Hudson, and then I was full on motherhood. I also uh, do property management in Rexburg. Okay. So I do that too. Um, but I had Hudson, so I was a stay at home mom, but it's also working. Mm -hmm. but I stay at home. And then I had Parker and photography had always kind of been in the background. I hadn't done it, mm -hmm. but I, I had always like followed photographers online and always been interested in the industry. And like every few months I'd say to my husband, like, man, I, I think I could do that. I think mm -hmm. I could really be into photography. Did you have a camera at this point of no, any kind? I didn't. No. I, I got my camera two days before my first photo shoot. Stop. So yeah. plenty of time to get the hang of it. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I, oh my gosh. Were yeah. you stressing? Um, well I had, so how did that happen? Uh, well, it was a friend. <laughs> okay. It was a friend that was a, for the photo shoot. It was a friend. And I um, I had been practicing a ton. Like, I had been watching. So, let me, let me back up. Okay. For me, mm -hmm. coming back from holidays of the end of 2022. 2022. I, mm -hmm. I came home. We came home. We were getting settled. And I turned to my husband. And I said, all right, 2023 is the year to get stuff done. Okay. We're buying a house. I'm starting a business. <laughs> And that was kind of it. Like from there, we just, we were under contract for the house, which is my photography studio, mm -hmm. the cottage. Okay. Um, we were under contract within two to three weeks after that. Oh my gosh. And you just worked quickly we, on it. We just, just did it. Yeah. yeah. So 
like I said, I took on a lot all at the same time. No and so I, during those, so it's from like January to March. My first shoot was in March. I think it was like March 10th or something. No, we closed on the house March 9th. And then I had my first shoot March 11th wow. at the house. At the studio. And you're already ready at the house to go? Like, yeah. So yeah. we, like the, it was staged and everything. Mm-hmm. We were really fortunate. We bought the cottage. It was used as an Airbnb. Okay. And so we bought the cottage and it was fully furnished, fully decorated, came with fully everything. renovated. That's yeah. convenient. Wow. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It was so awesome. That's and nice. Yeah. My, my vision for the cottage was there was a, we didn't really know when we went under contract, we didn't really know what we were going to do with it. If Mm -hmm. I'm being honest, we were like, we were like, we can move in, but I wanted to have a photography, um, a space dedicated to photography, even though Mm -hmm. I didn't have a camera, I didn't have a clientele, (laughs) I didn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything, but I was like, I'm going to dedicate part of this house to photography. So there's a sunroom in the cottage that I knew I could set up, um, a backdrop system and do mm-hmm. seamless paper rolls. And I wanted to get into branding photography. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of the vision for that. And then come, we were already under contract. We were like, yeah, we could move in. My husband was getting his master's and then he told me he's rolling it into a PhD. And I was like, oh. Is that more? More yeah. school. <laughs> Super okay. more school. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, you're not getting a job. Our situation's not changing. We're not going to move. And so I was like, we could probably use the whole house as a photography studio and yeah. try that, see how it goes. Yeah. So that's like if you can pay for it. Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. So I um I did so much back end stuff before I had my camera, before I had a session, before I so I was practicing online. I was downloading like raw images and editing. Hmm. And just finding stuff to work on online, cool. figuring out my camera before I had it and watching yeah. YouTube videos yeah. about it and all that stuff. I had my like booking website done, my wow. photography website done, my studio website done before I even closed on the house before. Yeah. <laughs> so all that stuff. So it's a little backwards. Um, you were just confident that it was going to work. Yeah. yeah you were like I'm very was, confident yeah. that this just, was working. Well, it was happening. Yeah. Like it was, it was like, gonna happen. We, I got to this point where I was like, well, if we're buying the house, I'm starting the business. If I'm starting the business, we're buying the house. And mm-hmm. it just had to happen at that point. I was under mm-hmm. contract. We were moving forward and I was like, well, I got to do it. It's done, a lot it's of done. pressure. It's got to happen. So, so yeah, the studio was totally staged. We bought it like that. It was awesome. And then, like I said, a few days after we closed on the house, I did my first photo shoot there. It was a family photo shoot um, with a friend and her newborn and a couple of her kids. And it was awesome. It was it great. Turned, yeah. It, it went was great. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> did you use just the sunroom or the whole house? The whole house. Yeah. We did like um, lifestyle photography and did like the, you know, the newborn mm-hmm. lifestyle photography mm-hmm. type, type stuff. Um, but it was, you know, it was my first photo shoot. So it took like two, three hours. And the mom was like, eh, are we gonna do this? <laughs> like, I just need to make sure that we can. And then <laughs> I make took sure we have the shot. thousands I was going to say pictures. you probably had so many. <laughs> I'm calling for hours and it's like, whoa, never again. You uh-huh. know, like, Learning those slows lessons. Slows down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. yeah. Like maybe no, don't take so many pictures. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh-huh. it was a yeah. lot, but it was a good experience. And I like to this day, I'm really happy with those pictures. I mean, I've learned a lot since then, but I'm really happy with those pictures and yeah how it went and yeah so that reminds me of when we were in Hawaii we would do like some of the first jobs that we did were following people up hikes to take engagement photos yeah Mm -hmm. so the husband would contact us like hey we're gonna be on the island and we just need someone to follow us up this hike and so we just had to be like (laughs) just play like tourists behind them so we literally be like 20 yards behind this couple yeah there's enough people yeah there's people you're just following up the camera (laughs) taking pictures but oh my god by the end of that like hour and a half two hours i had like three thousand pictures all of like, <laughs> like the same thing photos. you know They're like because it's like the constantly wind blowing, yeah. like a bad angle on them yeah. and you're like mm. like maybe maybe 50 of them were like really good and yeah. the rest were just you're like why did i take all <laughs> of these so much time yeah yeah yeah, yeah, and it still takes time to go through every single one of those pictures. Yeah, you're adding you to that workload yeah. of just. It's like, what if I yeah. miss the good one? Yeah. If mm-hmm. I don't look at it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't just skip like 10, even though they're the same. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But then that shows you like the importance of posing and like slowing down yeah. and like being mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm not just going to keep hitting the trigger. Yes. And hope it happens. We got to make this happen. Taking your time to stop and be like, yeah. okay. 
Yes. Let's rearrange. Although mm-hmm. you couldn't do that when you're following somebody on a hike. No, yeah. no. Yeah. That case, it's, it doesn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for the house, do you guys live in it now or is it strictly just for photos? We don't. It is for photography. So I rent it out. Other photographers rent it. Mm-hmm. I use it all the time mm-hmm. and then we airbnb it too so oh, we good. the airbnb factor too yes so that's what i was curious do about all of that yeah why you went like full like the studio route and not just fully airbnb but i didn't I realize you, you could do it. both you so do that's both. awesome yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um we i use it it's it's kind of interesting if you look at the financials of it um Sometimes it's way more worth it for me to take on shoots than take on an Airbnb guest. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, because I'm not paying a cleaner. And like your hassle of everything too. Right. It's your time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Airbnb booking system's fairly easy, but if I take three shoots in one day, that's way more than a one night guest or two night guest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you kind of, because I used to be like, oh, we're going to prioritize Airbnb because that'll obviously make us yeah. more money. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. So I make sure to prioritize my photography. Mm -hmm. Um, And then for other photographers renting it out, I have space for them as well. But it's kind of a balance making sure like the financials work out of it. It's an interesting thing because what has happened is my mortgage is a business expense now. And so it's like I have to make sure I'm meeting that or else I'm falling under profit. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. So well, what's like your hourly rate? Now I'm just comparing. I'm trying to do it in my head. Okay. Yeah. I'm like the hourly rate for the studio versus like Airbnb. Because then, um, yeah, you would make. Right. So yeah. our, for renting it out to other photographers, yeah. it's $40 an hour. Mm-hmm. And then for our Airbnb, the nightly rate, it depends on the season. So for uh, winter season, it goes down. There's not a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And so it's like 100 15 a night 120 hmm. a night and then during the busy season it's like 145 so that's interesting the summer season and that's pretty competitive with the other airbnbs yeah. around yeah. i market survey and check yeah. out the values a lot yeah yeah so it's, it's way my, better to get your own jobs yeah yeah yeah, yeah right but so nice i'm sure when a rental comes in and it's just you know easy money yeah and then especially when i'm like not taking on a lot of clientele it's like okay like well i always say that the the house is our our cash cow like we're gonna milk it for all it's worth and we have it now and Mm -hmm. like i said we use it for a lot of different things and Mm -hmm. i also rent it out for like events so i've had people do like it's not huge it's not a huge house or anything but it works for a yeah, space. Yeah, you can fit people in there. It's got a kitchen, I assume, yeah. and bathrooms. Yeah, and yeah, it's got all the stuff. It has three bedrooms and kitchen and bathroom. Would be yeah. good for events like yeah. that. Like well, smaller. and in Rexburg, there's this market. Another reason why I wanted a studio of sorts is because when I had Parker, I wanted newborn photos. I didn't want them outside. I wanted them in the house. I didn't want them in my house. Mm-hmm. Cause I had a kid. Not after having a kid. I yeah. had a kid, yeah, right. <laughs> and I had my toddler, and it's not a picture perfect place. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to clean my bedroom up to make it picture perfect. I don't want to decorate. I want to, you know, buy all the things and then return all the things. And mm-hmm. I, I just didn't want to do that. So I was looking around and I couldn't find anything. Yeah. I couldn't find anything. And so that was a huge marketing thing for me when I opened the cottage. I was like, "Look, if you're having a newborn, this is your place to go. You don't mm-hmm. have to clean your house. You don't have to decorate your house. Like." I have it ready for you because that's exactly what I was looking for after having a baby. Yeah. Those in home, like newborn shoots are like pretty popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a good point. Cause it's like, I ended up doing it in my home and I, I mean, it was fine, but I was like, it could have been cuter. (laughs) It's different too. When you go to a location for a photo shoot, the vibes just feel different. Yeah, it totally does. It feels more there for the shoot. And and it feels more like professional setup and apart from your Mm -hmm. everyday. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. It's it's nice to have that asset, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like a big thing. It is nice to have it. And then just being able to use it for me has been huge for my photography because I do, I specialize in branding and boudoir photography. Mm -hmm. So it probably helps having the house too for boudoir. Oh, yeah. That's. That's the only place I do it. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah. sure. We don't do it outside. I yeah. haven't. Yeah. I haven't done that. Willing to, if anybody wants to. Be different. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, but <laughs> that's um, that's probably what I do most is boudoir. And mm-hmm. interesting. I have the house, and I couldn't do boudoir without the house. Yeah. Yeah. So. So how do you market that? We were actually just talking about that yesterday <laughs> because we were like. It's really hard for boudoir photographers yeah. because they can't show their you, work. It's like hard to yeah. show your work. And I remember someone 
way back in the day was like, I'm giving away free shoots for boudoir, but you have to let me post it on my social media. (laughs) And I think it was like really hard for them. It can definitely be hard. Um, That is something I've struggled with. And as a business owner that uses social media marketing, you have to maintain an online presence to be prevalent and to build clientele. Um, but if I'm only doing boudoir, it's really hard. Yeah. And there are a lot of photographers that do boudoir that have private boudoir pages. Right. I have seen that, but I don't want to do that because it's a lot harder to market and yeah. get people to your page if it's private. And it's just like weird when you have to like request yeah, that page. And, like, like nobody's going to request. Weird. Yeah. Right. Weird. Like I don't pe- know. not, not nobody, but people aren't likely to request to follow a boudoir photography page as they are to just follow along a public page. You probably get a bunch of guys following it. Well, that, that's why they're doing it so that <laughs> yeah, they can like they deny, can deny, it. deny the guys. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that like catfishing. also, yeah, I mean, catfishing <laughs> you is never totally know. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely had like some catfishers request cause I have a private boudoir lookbook. So that's part of how okay. I, I like post on my stories. Like if you ever want to see more of my boudoir look book or work, I can send you the password and link to my book, hmm. but I've definitely had some, you've had some reach out, had some not <laughs> women, that are pretending to be women reach out and be like, I want the link. And I'm like, no, Ooh, how'd sir. You catch him? <laughs> um, there, it's a fake Instagram, you know, like it's like, mm. there's like three posts and you know, zero followers. Yeah. It's obvious. And so I'm like, I'm not, have you gotten the scam? We get it all the time. Someone asking if you can take birthday pictures for $300. Um, have you gotten that one? No, but I've gotten the seniors graduating one. Mm. So have you gotten that We've one? We've gotten like seniors um, sports photos. Yeah, the soccer. But it's yeah. always asking for some kind of shoot that's $300 mm-hmm. and they're always out of town. Yeah. <laughs> so now I just yeah. respond. I'm like, this is a bad scam. Every time where I'm like, you're bad at not, this. And they don't even better. respond. Yeah. <laughs> like choose a better scam. Yeah, this is do, not working. Do better than this. Yeah. I've had that same, <laughs> like, it's like, I have three boys on a soccer team. I need a senior shoot for them. And I've had it like four mm. to five times. And then like, it's always like over explanative too when you yeah. read through it where I'm like, why would I need to know that? Yeah, th- this and can be more simple. I don't yeah. need that. Yeah. So now I've just learned it's just, yeah. So if anyone out there gets that photographer, yeah, it's $300. Scam. Don't do scam. it. Yeah. It's a scam. Yeah. Yeah. So they say the why, why are you the money right away? But <laughs> they do not. <laughs> it's a scam. Silly. Um, yeah. Marketing for boudoir can be tricky just because of that. And I've definitely, um, so I haven't gone the private route. I may still end up doing that at some point. I've been encouraged by some people to do that. It probably wouldn't hurt. Like you'd have to just be to on top it of it. With- yeah. I've gotten more, um, I do like funny reels about boudoir and okay. it doesn't show funny my work. Reels. Yeah. Like okay. I do, like there was an audio clip going around of like, how stoked are you? Stoked. I can't wait to tell my mom. And then like, it was me. And then it flashed up a text from my mom saying, I don't like your boudoir ad. <laughs> and so she, my mom does not fully approve of me doing boudoir photography. And so I actually use like text from my mom a lot uh-huh. and post things with that. And it kind I of like that. puts the word out there that uh-huh. I do boudoir photography. Yeah. Um, but I do post pictures sometimes. And every time I do... I lose followers. Your mom doesn't like it because of the type of content? The booty. I mean, you're working with yeah. other women, so she should be, like, happier about that I mean, in a way. my mom is um, of the older generation. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like... Mm-hmm. So she really loves it. She super loves, she loves it. Yeah. Stuff. It's, uh... <laughs> no, she, <laughs> she struggles with it a little bit. Um, yeah, so I... I've actually told her like, yeah, keep texting me after I post stuff because that's great for my business. It's content. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I posted like a story um, and it was like the camera, like a picture of my camera and said like boudoir photography today. And it was someone's like booty with heels and whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, my second grade teacher commented on it and was like, I saw your mom at the temple today. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Not the time like you did this on purpose. You yeah, know what absolutely. you're doing. So I made a reel out of that, and it was great. Got a lot of you know views, and it's funny. So it's just a way of like reminding people I do this. Yeah, but I'm no, not. I like that. That's everything. a good method. Yeah. So That's I do that method. Uh-huh. But I also, every I'll make reels of like the pictures. Yeah. And I've gotten messages like so unfollow. Is boudoir photography like unfollow. not allowed in? 
like, I don't know what LDS religion culture. you are. Is it LDS? Okay. So, um, cause I mean, it's for your husband. So like technically if you're it's for whatever you want it to be. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a really, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, from a religious standpoint to sure. justify it, like sure. if it's for your husband, I don't, why babies. wouldn't it be looked down upon? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's allowed or not. I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a much bigger, yeah, that's another I mean, podcast. It's like, yeah, like it's a really like individual thing, I think. And um, I think some people are like probably pretty hardcore against it. My mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's some people that, uh, man, yeah, you're right. It if is you can for just your go husband. sit in on weddings in like the back aisle. So like they're married walking down the aisle after they've been married and you just hand them your... Boudoir card. Oh, I should do that. That's then a good it's idea. okay. Wedding crasher now. Yeah. But I LDS actually have, <laughs> I have a lot of um, engaged girls do it and give it as a groom's gift. Great. Yeah. Like, because I make books for them too, uh-huh. for my boudoir sessions, and they give the book as a groom gift, and it's really cute. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. But it's. Um, but frowned upon by mom. <laughs> by my mom. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe by, actually, I had a mom, I had a boudoir session on Saturday, and I had a mom come for her daughter. Huh. And was there for the shoot? Yeah. She, oh. She's They're very close. She's a very cool mom. Mm. I, like, I mean, you'd have like to be. Like a mean girl's cool mom. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's cool like mom. stepping she's in, cool like, mom. try yeah. this pose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, not joking. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Um, but it was actually, like, um, I was texting the girl about it. She's like, is it okay if my mom comes and my friend comes? Like, and are I was you like, okay? Yeah. I was like, you can't shy away from any poses because your mom's going to be there, like, just so you know. And she was like, I totally won't. And I was like, okay. Anyway, and her mom and her friend come and it was actually really fun like if if anybody wants to bring their girls to a shoot like it is fun i've had that happen a couple times Mm because they just hype them up yeah Yeah. for sure Uh but her mom the whole time oh honey you're stunning oh you are so stunning you are never gonna regret these pictures you are gorgeous that's awesome that's so sweet it was honestly wholesome yeah Yeah. Yeah. maybe pair that together but it was she wasn't making it weird oh not at all she was like Good. She was so encouraging, so supportive, so loving, and just like fawning over her daughter being this gorgeous, stunning, yeah. beautiful person that she was. And That's you were really saying cool. it's for the husbands, but it's, holy cow, yeah. what it does for the woman mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And yeah. Yeah. I've done one in here and she had like a bunch of tattoos yeah and that's what she was like wanting to like show off mm-hmm. and like because it was like her whole body was like covered in tattoos yeah and she I was s- like this is this is for me like I just need to see it I want to like, see everything mm-hmm. I am <laughs> I say tattoos are like like your own personal brand and uh-huh. like it's so cool because you can tell who a person is without seeing their whole body well for boudoir photography but then I have people who <laughs> are can. like you, can. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah you can't post me a picture if it has a tattoo in it I'm like ah oh, dang uh, it that's like your whole body so yeah. I guess I can't post any of your pictures right so I do give right. them the option like they have three options like I can post whatever I can post nothing or anything without your face or if they have like identifying features like hair tattoos whatever mm-hmm. that's really specific to them mm-hmm. then I'll I won't post those. Do you have that in like your five percent discount if you let me use your pictures? Five percent, a nice little little discount. Yeah, like (laughs) let me do it. I yeah, it is part of my booking Mm -hmm. process. It like says like um like I can use your images unless it's boudoir and we'll talk specifics and blah blah. blah. So Mm -hmm. they get to kind of choose what I can post and what I can't post, which is fair. Yeah. On that with the booking system, how did you decide on which one you wanted to use? Because there's a lot of trash ones out there. <laughs> um, that's a good question. We I, went through like five before we landed on the one that we like, and so many of them are just terrible. Yeah. I use so for the um, studio, I use Square okay. site mm-hmm. booking, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how can I mesh the two of these to be able to? book through that so what i've done is i use yeah. square to book because mm-hmm. um i use pixie set as my gallery yeah. mm-hmm. delivery system and their booking was they don't have nothing it's no. terrible yeah. yeah i i tried it thought that would be my thing no, yeah not mm-hmm. it. um mm-hmm. so I, I ended up doing square and then i just book with them um verbally over whatever communication we're doing mm-hmm. and then i book their uh, like block it off session mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then gotcha. it, but it still sends them automatically sends them a contract sends them the time sends them reminders yeah because it's through square booking so it's really nice i feel like i figured out like a way to utilize those tools on square site without having people going in and booking themselves because i yeah. i had it set up like that at first and then i didn't love it because it was like well 
I'm actually not available that day, so right. I can't book it. So mm -hmm. that's what I am using right now. Oh, yeah, because it was just your studio. So your studio is open all the time. And then your yeah. schedule yourself, which wouldn't be open all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out a way to yeah. book I feel the days differently. Yeah. yeah. So so I use Square to book my my studio and then my clients. I manually book them into my Square app. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, those booking sites, they're they are their own beast. They mm -hmm. are. And yeah, I had no yeah. idea. It's crazy how much they can affect, like, your workflow and, like, yeah. your bookings, too. Yeah, like, all how that, much like, can hinder back that. end stuff mm -hmm. can totally change the way you run your business and for better or for worse, mm -hmm. 100%. Well, yeah, and then if something, like, double books or messes up, then you look bad having to tell the client, yeah. like, sorry, <laughs> you can't actually use it. Like You're like, my just, system messed up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> which is hard because I'm, like – calendar updates is like a constant for me because I have it on Airbnb, I have it on the square site, and then I have my own photography. And so I have to update all yeah. the calendars because like double booking is like my biggest fear. Right. Because now you have Airbnb. <laughs> right. So and then, VRBO, if you count them as yeah. two separate entities and then, so I have to mesh all the so calendars. So you're having so to you add in your bookings getting this now. getting four places, VRBO, Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Luckily, oh. uh, VRBO and Airbnb have a communication system where they oh, can, and Squaresight does too. If you, like it can go with your Google calendar, but like my Google calendar doesn't really apply in this situation. So mm -hmm. I just manually add it into Square. So the ones I have to manually add in are between Airbnb and Square site. So I just have to block off the dates. Just remember to block it off as soon as it comes in. Yeah. Which can yeah. be a struggle if I'm like changing a diaper, you know? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. Right. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. oh, remind me to do this tonight. Mm -hmm. And then if anyone books in like those next nine hours, I'm in trouble. So, right. It Luckily, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. It hasn't happened too much. I, I think it has happened like twice where I've yeah. had to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. It was booked like right before you. So, but it's been, it's been pretty smooth actually with Good. all of that. And that was, like I said, I, got a lot of stuff figured out before I got my camera, before I got the right. house and that figuring all that stuff out really helped with the process of booking everything, yeah. getting everything flowing. Were you already smoothly. thinking about that before you got the camera and like everything? Yeah. You, yeah. I already had it. It wasn't made. a surprise. Yeah. No, I, I already had like the square site set up. I nice. already had, I, I, I was, I was there. I was done by the time, by the time the camera came in, by the time we had the house, uh -huh. it was ready to go. I think I, so like I said, I had my first few shoots. Um, a couple days after, because I did two shoots like back to back for friends, newborn shoots. And then mm -hmm. um, I opened up the studio. We closed on March 9th. I opened up a studio for booking in April mm -hmm. to other photographers. And I had okay. been I had been doing a huge like marketing thing on Instagram. I had a um, girls night at the cottage mm -hmm. when we when I first opened it up. And um, I was like, man, I don't know if anybody's going to come. And I was like, oh, like 15 people. Like we can get like 15 to 20 people. Yeah. And we did a, it was a girls night. I had like, like backdrop set up so we could take fun, fun pictures. I had reached out to tons of different businesses. Um, so I had a piercer coming. I had a permanent jewelry girl coming mm -hmm. and like there's a bounce house in the backyard, like all stuff. Yeah. Anyway, and as it gets closer, like I'd been advertising it, reaching out to lots of people. I think it's closer. I'm like, okay, like 20 to 30 people for sure. For sure. Like, I think we're there. That and we're saying like, I'll, I'll see you there. Yeah. Like okay. I kept doing polls, like who's yeah. coming, who's coming. Um, and then as it got closer, I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna have like 50 people here. Wow. And then we got closer and I was like, I think there's gonna be like 80 people here. Like, I don't think we can fit 80 people we in the house. More food, more <laughs> and snacks, yeah, more, and it was like, more everything. Whoa, oh my gosh. I didn't realize. It. So it ended up being like 80 to 100 people. Stop. Nice. Yeah. And it was That's awesome. It was so awesome. It was May. Yeah, it was just in May. So I just opened up the studio. Wow. And um, yeah, it was it was insane, which was awesome because it put the studio out there, mm -hmm. put my name out there as a photographer. Mm -hmm. And then I also had like other businesses that came in that I connected to. And I ended up doing branding photography for those people. Yeah. And, yeah, it was it was so much fun. It yeah. Was, it was crazy. It was cool. It was awesome. That was yeah. great. So yeah. that's like a collaboration you've done. How did you entice everyone there? Like the people who were setting up like booths, was it like kind of like booths that you were offering? Yeah, or? the like piercer and the permanent jewelry girls charged. So it was like. They got to keep what they made. Yeah, they got to sure. keep what they made. So I just said, you know, I invited them to come. Yeah. And um, yeah, so they, the, <laughs> the the permanent jewelry girl is um, Rory dot everlasting jewelry is her Instagram. Um, her name's Allie. She was like brand, brand new. Like, I don't even think she had any posts on her 
Instagram. So how did you find her? I was just searching for people. Oh, okay. Um, because I knew I wanted permanent jewelry there because it was really like happening. Everybody was getting permanent jewelry. Yeah, the fad right now. Yeah, it was super big. Uh-huh. Um, and I wanted to find someone that would be willing to do it. And so I noticed she didn't have any posts, but she was starting out. And I was like, I bet she would. Yeah, no, be that's a good point. This. Yeah. So I messaged her, and anyway, now she's huge. She's doing great. She's got a lot of following and a lot of business. And yeah, yeah. So we, she was, um. It was just funny because it was like we had no idea. Like I said, there were 80 to 100 people. The house is not huge. Yeah. And like the line for. What is the square footage of it? That's a so good I can question. like picture. I have how many no people. idea. <laughs> is it a two story? No, I can Google it. Um, there's a basement, but we don't open it to. Okay. The okay. You said three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. So there's like a. You walk in, it's like the dining room area. And then off to the left, there's mm-hmm. like French so yeah, doors. Yeah, 80 to 100. Room. Well, probably lot. it was like body to body. Yeah, for like, eighty to hundred people. Yeah, yeah, it was like uh-huh. body to body. And we uh-huh. had the back. I had the backyard <laughs> open. There was the fire pit and like s'mores in the backyard. Yeah, but it was still like packed. And you said were, there was a line. Yeah, for the piercing and the permanent oh, jewelry. Right. There was. So they probably had a great night then. Oh, they had an excellent night for sure. They yeah. they were nonstop. Yeah, good they were them. nonstop. Yeah, good for them. So that's how I got them to come. And then I had some people that were wanting like the exposure because I was as I was marketing I was like this business is going to be here this business is going to be here so I had some people donating like baked goods and hmm. um like different foods like that mm-hmm. so they yeah invited them to come and they came to do that so. they make shit up off cool. topic but the permanent jewelry does that like do you think that gives people anxiety a little bit to Just get know, it knowing you can't take it off does, do you ever, do you have one? You have one? I have two. Does it make you feel anxious? No, actually. I was not, like, I don't think I've ever worn bracelets in my life before mm-hmm. this. And it doesn't bother me at all. Like, I love it. So it has to be the want? right tension for me or yeah. else it'll be like. Does it have to get cut off if you ever take it off? Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah. There's no clasp. Yeah. You have to like Permanent cut it. forever. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Does that give you anxiety? A little bit. <laughs> Just I knowing anxiety. I couldn't take it off would be like a little weird. On the little kids where I'm yeah. like, they've got a little fat chubby arm right now. Yeah. And that is like right over their I know. I was, I was like, oh, it'd be so cute. Parker and I got matching bracelets. But I was like, nah, right now. It's a little, that, it's Just a make hers detachable. Yeah. yeah. I think they. I think some of them do that where you can put a clasp on. But then it like, it's not That's like not permanent. permanent yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we could match. But yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. No. Permanent. <laughs> okay. So how do you... Price yourself. How did you come up with your pricing? Um, that's a good question. Um, I did a lot of market surveys evaluating the market. The market in East Idaho and Rexburg um, is so different from – you guys aren't from here. Mm, yes and no. I went to high school at okay. IF right there. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I went like to high a school in Meridian. Yeah. Oh, so you guys are from here. Like kind of. Towards mm-hmm. the end. But you went somewhere. Yeah, I moved here. <laughs> we just <laughs> off topic. We just both claim. Yeah, she was like I pretty lived, much raised in like Maryland, DC yeah, area. No, I was area. Raised, born and raised That's in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I grew up in my like middle school, high school years here. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. I see. So I'm from California. Okay. Um, the pricing for photography is so different. Mm-hmm. When did you come here from California? Um, was I it came, recent? I came when I was 18. So oh, okay, I've been here a while. Well. I came to school and then I dropped out for a little bit and then I came back. So mm-hmm. where'd you go? Um, when I dropped out of school. Yeah. Well, what school were you? <laughs> I don't know. What school were you going to? I went to BYU. Okay. I graduated from BYU. Okay, where'd you go? Literally. <laughs> literally. I dropped out. <laughs> yeah. So I was. I grew up in California. I moved here when I was eighteen, so it was twenty twelve. Okay. And then I was here for a couple of years. Went back to California. Worked. Got married. Came back. Finished school. And then. Anyway, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. super off topic. No, it's all good. I don't remember how yeah, we got now there. everyone knows where we're from. Yeah. It was, helps with the background, especially with pricing. That. I wasn't planning on sharing that I dropped out of school. Because <laughs> I'm just... Secrets. This is going to be the clickbait. It's that important that for people to know. <laughs> it's part of my story. It yeah, is. It's your story. <laughs> okay. um, I'll make it louder at that part. Oh, perfect. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I should have leaned in. I dropped out. And it's okay. You're allowed okay, to do that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you're 18 and you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing And you run out of money. And you got to work more. Life hits you. Yeah, life hits you. Anyway, for... Pricing. What I was saying was this area is so different mm-hmm. and the photography industry is so oversaturated. 
It is. You can find family pictures for $50. Mm-hmm. You can find family pictures for $400. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's a really interesting pricing market. For free if you post it on the East Idaho on Facebook. Facebook page. Yeah, yeah that's There's true. True desperation people. on there. Yeah, I mean what are your pictures going to turn out like? Who knows? But Who knows? They might be great. <laughs> if your family is really attractive and really uh-huh. photogenic, sure. Mm-hmm. And you've got some good outfits yeah. on your own. Your odds are yeah. better. Yeah, your <laughs> odds are better. <laughs> um, so, but in like California, you can't do family pictures for under like $300. Like oh, that's no. like, that's crazy. And uh-huh. no. at that but point, you just survive too. also for your life. Yeah. Like you can't be charging I, you $300. Can't be charging right. And yeah. you get like five photos yeah, and, and pay ten dollars for each additional for photo. Each photo. Yes, yeah. I and can't then pay that, for though. rights to post them. Yes. She's like, <laughs> what do you mean rights? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all crazy. Like my sister's getting newborns in California, and she got like it was legit like five photos, and she had to pay like per photo on top of paying for the I session. can't stand that. I know the per I photo don't thing. Like that. If yeah. it was like an excessive amount, I'd understand it. But like for most shoots that you're in, that's like a, such a random case scenario that would happen yeah. where. I would feel the need to charge like extra. Well, that's where yeah. I'm like, just charge more for just, your shoot. If now, if you're trying to get more money off of each individual photo, you know? Yes. That like, was like when we, on our last vacation, we were um, in Mexico and they had a place there that did like just vacation pictures at sunset. And yeah. Like, I wanted to do some. I was like, I just, just want to do it just to they... feel out how he is a photographer <laughs> and how they do it here. Just, I just want to do it. And I went in there to meet with him and that's all it was. He was like, oh, it's only $20, but it's uh, $75 per photo. If you buy like five or more, then it becomes like 65 a photo. And mm. I was like, you lost me. What? Yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> just, you, you could have me. just said it was like $400 and I probably would have been like, like all right, let's do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. But now that there's all these like fees. Yeah, yeah. I kept like, thinking Now about it's making it, like, me think math. that you're not confident and you're just hoping there's a good picture in there yeah. that I'm going to want to buy. Yeah. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. come off. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I it, I don't do that. I was going to say, so do you do that? Anyways. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah, she's like, that's I exactly been, what I do. <laughs> actually, I charged $500 per photo uh-huh. and you only get five. No, just kidding. Um, unedited, $700. Yeah, unedited. Yeah. So as far as like pricing my stuff went, in the beginning, I just did lots of market surveys, looked around, looked at people that were similar to my experience, which was like zero. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I'm not going to like, this is taking a can't lot of be, time yeah, from free. me. No. Yeah, no, it can't no. be free. No. And I've put a lot into this already. And mm-hmm. the equipment is expensive, as you guys know. Mm-hmm. Um, Sadly. Yeah, it's real expensive. Um, and so I, I priced myself low in the beginning, as maybe yeah. we all do. Yeah. 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 Um, and then Gotta start somewhere. But but still around market price. Like I feel like I didn't like undervalue myself too much. Yeah. Um. Except for in branding. I, I because I was I my niche is branding and boudoir photography, and as I did more branding, I realized like these people are making money off of these photos. They are making money off of. They're their making photos. money off of these photos. So mm-hmm. I need to be charging higher price because they're li- and they get these forever. It's benefiting their business. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. their, it's their website. It's their product photos. It's, yeah, it's an evergreen. It's, it's yeah. staying there for ever. Forever. Yeah. 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 And so, and the other thing that was happening with my branding photography was, um, people I was doing shoots for were doing collaborations with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was doing a shoot for somebody and she got a free tan saying, I'll give you the pictures from my photo shoot. So she was essentially trading my photos as money. Mm -hmm. Um, But I wasn't seeing any benefit from that. So it was benefiting two businesses. Yeah. Just finding the little workaround in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens a bit. Yeah. So (laughs) I I felt like that was a little shady. But I was like, I guess they're your pictures. But also at the same time, like, and then the the tanning person was sharing them on her website and she was benefit, you know? So, yeah. So I, yeah. I realized like, okay, I, for branding, yeah. like it's not just, mm-hmm. I'm not just doing like headshots for a profile picture. Mm-hmm. No. I need to, I need, so I did under my value, undervalue my work for branding photography when I first started, which is funny because that was like, when I came into photography, that was what I was doing. Like I was like, I'm going into branding. That's what I want to do. And work with women in business. That's what I want to do. Um, anyway, so as I've, gotten more experience. I have adjusted my prices based on what I feel like I can offer in a more experienced way. So my boudoir photography is more expensive than my family photography because I don't do family photography 
as much. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. And like my packages are different for all those things. So a lot of looking at the market in the area and comparing with that and then what I personally excel at and um, the amount of experience I've had in those different mm-hmm. sessions and areas and things yeah. like that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so hard when you see, it was in the beginning, it was a little bit more annoying when you would see like those really cheap shoes, yeah. like really like where you're like, man, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but then it was when we were talking to Tia, like she's a hairstylist and mm-hmm. she was like, there's people who are out there that are like your people who will pay your prices. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I just have to remember that. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's not my clientele. <laughs> yeah. I, just let it go. It's both ways. Like we're not yeah. meant to work together. Yeah. You really do just have yeah. to let it go and just mm-hmm. be like, Okay, not for me. Yep. Like, yeah. I, every once in a while, I said that I'm like, oh, do I need to mark my prices down? I'm like, no. no. I, I put a lot into this. Like, I, I can't. Like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. It probably and helped then, you be a little bit more firm with your pricing since you had the house going into it. That yeah. you you couldn't just be like, oh, all I've invested is this, you know, a couple grand in my camera. Right. And yeah, that's all like, I look lose. It. Like, you lose. <laughs> I bought this whole house for yeah. you to be naked in. So yeah. Yeah. you have to you pay me a decent price you now. Pay me a decent price. Yeah, yeah, and that's the other thing with my boudoir photography. Like, I'm providing a whole studio for you, and mm-hmm. there's a mm-hmm. lot of variety that comes with that, and and curtains on every window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some windows. Sometimes we open. I mean, it depends but on the day. I was about to say, um, when you like lower your prices for someone else it also devalues the work you've done for other people yeah. now at that rate. Yeah. So that's also I have to remember that. I'm like, nope, I'm not devaluing myself. Yeah. Keeping us mm-hmm. at this level here. Yeah. Like I'm worth this. Mm-hmm. I've put mm-hmm. in this much work. I'm worth this. This mm-hmm. is where I'm priced. Yeah. I'm so sorry that doesn't work with And I'm me. sure you've taken a few jobs too, where you like do bend the rules a little bit and take those lower jobs and then regret it because <laughs> yeah. like, cause uh, you love photography too. Like you, you're never yeah. like, mad but it is like when you realize like how many days have gone into something well and, and then the worst is when they're like when you like do a deal for somebody mm-hmm. yeah and then you over deliver because you love it mm-hmm. and then they're like but can i have some more and i'm like what or like a change or a little thing you're yeah. like i just bent over backwards for yeah you. Like, like i like hours I and hours you a deal. and a discounted rate <laughs> your package was 50 pictures i gave you 80 and now you want more mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's a lot, girl. Mm-hmm. Give an inch to take a mile. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you learn with those kinds of things and mm-hmm. the finances. And you are ban those clients forever. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> Banned. <laughs> yeah, those ones are hard to, sometimes hard to work with. So, do you find it hard managing? I'll rephrase that. How do you balance? <laughs> not do you find it hard? Do you find it hard? Of course. Yes. <laughs> How do you balance your work life and your personal life now that you have, you know, a third one on the way? Yeah. And you know, that's really Busy hard. husband. Yeah. Um, so my husband's getting his PhD. He's gone a lot. Congratulations, um, husband. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Go Brooks. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> I'm proud of you. It's a lot of work. <laughs> um, he's getting his PhD from ISU in Pocatello. Okay. Um, so he commutes a few times a week and oh, wow. yeah, is gone. Um, and so, and then I also work as a property manager and so I'm, Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I do that too. Does that keep you busy? Like, what do you do with that? I mean, it is the best gig that anyone could ever get. Mm -hmm. Um, We've been doing it for a long time, my husband and I, because we're hired as a couple. Okay. Um, So we live on site. Oh, do you get free living too then? Yes. Oh, that's that nice. is the best deal. I've always seen that. And I'm like, I want that job. I'll do it. <laughs> yes. So that's, that's why when he wasn't getting a graduating with his master's, getting a yeah. job, we were There's like, why would we move into a oh, house? Yeah. yeah. Like you're. Well, yeah. Yeah. So got it free. We're yeah. staying here. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the best gig. It's a trap. It's a straight up trap, but it's the best gig. Um, and we very fortunate. We are in a four bedroom apartment hmm. and um, we told the, when I was having, let's see, when we were talking about having a second baby, I told the apartment owners like, Hey, we're going to move unless we can get more space somehow. And they were like, knock out a wall, like knock out a wall. They combined. were fine with you just knocking out a wall. Yeah. They just combined two apartments. We want you to stay. What? Yeah. So we did the work, got paid to do the work and <laughs> combined two apartments and yeah. So, um, huh. It's a trap, right? Yeah. So like at that point I wanted to move mm-hmm. and that was kind of why I was like, 
we're buying a house 2023 because we hadn't bought a house yet. And mm. I was like, mm -hmm. we feel late in the game on that, hmm. but we haven't needed to. So now we have a house. We don't live there. Um, which is no, kind of works out. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And every summer we're like, we should move here. We love it. Uh, yeah. And that's hard. Anyway, being the property manager, it's the best gig. Um, cause I work from home. Yeah. Um, and I, I joke that I work 15 minutes a week for that mm -hmm. and that's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it's a lot more. Um, sometimes it's 20 minutes. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's 20 minutes, which is a lot <laughs> more, you know, those five minutes are really precious, but I work, you know, four days a week, four hours a day for that. I'm on call, uh -huh. but I don't nice. always have tenants that are doing anything. So, so yeah, it does. I'm doing that on top of the other thing. So balancing yeah. You know, right, we're on the balance question. I was about studio. to ask more questions about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been doing property management for a long time. Is it time. school housing? No, is it it's just like an it's community oh, housing. Cool. So okay. it's like anybody can live there, but yeah. it's mostly students in gotcha. Rexburg, and yeah, which is another reason I feel like I saw the need for the studio because I lived in an apartment. I don't want yeah. pictures of my apartment, mm -hmm. <laughs> and all these people have apartments. They don't have places to like do things or have pretty pictures taken. Mm -hmm. They do a lifestyle photography. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was another like. And most people are like willing to buy a camera, but like not a studio space. Yeah. Or Which totally to sets you apart. Like you guys know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it totally sets you apart as yeah. to what you can offer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 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 It yep. changes the game on what you can offer. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I And just like the do... practice alone that you get from having a space that you don't have to. I don't know, feel like you're burdened by, I mean, technically you're paying for it anyways, yeah. but I guess say you get it for free, but you're paying for it. <laughs> but you feel yeah. like you're getting it for free. Yeah. You're like, I yeah. can do it here anytime I want. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to just like be able to feel comfortable yeah. when you come into a space, especially with clients. Mm -hmm. And I think what's been cool, which I'm sure you've seen too, is like when you get recurring people mm -hmm. um, and they get more comfortable in the space and start yeah. to kind of like, you can see them flourishing a little bit yeah. and like getting the hang of it. And it's like, it's cool to see. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen that from like, throwing parties at the cottage. Like I did that big girls night. I did like a, when Barbie came out, we did like a Barbie. I invited um, everybody to the mm -hmm. movies and then we came to the cottage afterwards and yeah. hung out. Nice. And then, so we've done, I've done stuff like that. And then I get a boudoir booking after that. And they're like, yeah, I was here for your cottage nice. party. Uh -huh. And you know, so it's, yeah. I'm sure that helps too getting like allowing them to see your personal side. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't want to do boudoir with someone who's like, you don't vibe with, like, yeah. it's just awkward as hell. Like yeah, <laughs> it's already true. probably going to be a little awkward. Yeah. Like, and if they're weird from the get go, just talking to them, like imagine talking to them with their clothes off. Like, yeah. It's, just, it's, it's so not going to get better. <laughs> I, I, I get like that question. Like is boudoir, is it weird to do? Like, is that uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. It's so not. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I see Whatever. some of these women like <laughs> fully nude and I, I swear after the photo shoot, I don't even remember what you look like. Like you're, yeah, you're just work. Yeah, it's just, and, yeah. Angles like, and you're lighting. You're gorgeous. And, like, I'm focusing on my you are gorgeous, <laughs> but like, yeah. I don't remember what you look like naked. I'm, I, I don't know if that's offensive, <laughs> but I don't like, I'm not, I'm like, not wow. like, that <laughs> you didn't remember me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, mad at you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I don't. So it's, it's not, it is interesting though. Cause I've had clients that are from age 19 to like 55. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the 19 year olds are yeah. often, um, BYU students who are engaged. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm the first person to see them naked. Yeah, oh like, no. and it is such a different experience <laughs> compared to the mom that's had four kids. Oh yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like it's still, still a blast, still a fun time. Mm -hmm. Like, but the way you're mm -hmm. treating them is almost like you're doing Just great, honey. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, Positive voice, yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to be condescending, but sometimes it's like, yeah. like, oh, you're doing so good. Like really encouraging. <laughs> Whereas with the mom, it's like, yeah, girl, get it. Like we're working this, like uh -huh. you're a hot mama. And then right, yeah, it's, a, it's a little more like tender. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. It's yeah. funny how that changes yeah. after just having, cause I remember being just like that way, just more shy and scared. Mm -hmm. I remember having my first baby and I was like, oh my God, everyone who's going to see me in this sea of people. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Yeah. It just, something changes. <laughs> it just happens, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is interesting. So I've definitely had, had that kind of thing where I see like the 19 year olds. I've had quite a few 
And then I'm like, oh, I'm the first person that's seen you naked. You are stunning. Oh my gosh. You're beautiful. I can't. You are confident. We got this. Yeah. And then the moms are You're like, great. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> they got the clothes. Before you say anything, yeah. they're just tops are off. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I like, so before people take their clothes off, I try to like talk to them about posing because I don't want them to stand there like, naked while I'm talking to them about it yeah. but the moms are like already going I'm like okay here we go <laughs> like, we're ready we're starting yeah so yeah. it's it's been funny to see the the difference and that's then the classic. the older clientele that's interesting too that's mm -hmm. that's fun um and it's cool like okay. it's always fun when you get not boudoir specific but just anyone in general who's like older where because I don't know like generationally like Older people it's sometimes just don't like their pictures. Like, yes. They're just like not. Yes. But when you get one who's just all about it, it's so fun. Yeah, because there's there's a generation before us that like uh. all those moms never wanted their picture taken. It's true. Yeah. It was yeah. like hide. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. hide. Like, and I've seen like um, videos like if your child ever asks to take a picture of you or if you're ever asked to take a picture in front of your child, make sure you say yeah. Like you just want your it. child to be confident and you to like give that example of even though you're not ready, you don't have your makeup on, whatever, mm -hmm. you are confident in who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when you get those older women that come in to do a boudoir, it's it's almost like they're breaking that cycle. Like it's it's cool. And mm -hmm. you don't expect them to do that. But I've actually had quite a few older women reach out and I've had I've had a couple follow through, but I've had quite a few reach out. And just thinking about it. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, I'm interested. I'm nervous. And I'm like, you do it, girl. Like, <laughs> we will we will do it and it'll mm -hmm. be awesome. Uh -huh. But it, I, I feel like it's breaking some sort of trauma cycle. I don't know. It probably is. Right. And it is true. Like, as a mom, like, you kind of, like, shy away from the camera sometimes. Like, I think it's people just see, like, the changes in themselves. Yeah. And that's hard. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I have, like, regret it. Like, when I was pregnant with our child... I like didn't take a lot of photos and I didn't do all these things. I look back and I'm like, dang it. Like, why yeah. didn't I do that? Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to do it again. Now that we have a studio, I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. I won't be sacrificing myself. Good. Sorry. Good. But. <laughs> 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 Me. <laughs> yeah. Know your audience, Sarah. <laughs> no, you're good. I get it. Right? But I'm yeah. like, it's tempting though, but I'm like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting. I feel like um, there's like the selfie generation. They've mm -hmm. been called like the selfie generation. I don't know if that's us or whoever, younger, older. I don't know. Maybe. But they, we're just more comfortable in front of a camera. And I yeah. think that's awesome. And yeah. you see that over and over again. That's true. And then the people that are younger than me, they come in and I'm like, man, you are so confident. <laughs> You're easy. You know, like we were like the old school, like Facebook days. Yeah. You know, like the old ones. And now they're like the TikTok dancers and these outfits. And they and know I'm what like, they're doing. They, yeah. They've learned everything what not to do from us. Yeah. Yes. They, they took us as breaking like yeah. all the bad things. And they're like, we're never doing that again. I had someone come in for a 21st birthday shoot and I was like man, you're amazing. Like, do you do this professionally? <laughs> it's just like, how do you have like so much? I'm a confident person. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel like I'm they, not. Like, whip it out. But it's they just, just like, like yeah. come out like so model-esque and uh -huh. like, it's so natural to them. It's crazy. Uh -huh. Like, you're amazing. The confidence. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Life hasn't hit them yet. No, just, <laughs> just wait. That's why. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> they don't have years. any drama. They're fine. <laughs> They're fine. <laughs> wow, that was a little grim. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's good. okay. That's life. Yeah, that's life. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right though. Something definitely changes. I feel like with um, I I've talked about this a lot to my husband about how having my first baby. Mm -hmm. Um, I was so immersed in motherhood. There was nothing of me. Like I wasn't even there. Yeah. And then my second child experience was so much different. Really? Oh yeah. It was. Cause now you like know what to expect. I don't want to say that I, I like, I loved my first child experience. <laughs> I didn't realize at the time mm -hmm. the high anxiety and stress and just pressure I was under. I didn't realize at the time. Kind of um, going to like survival mode. Yeah. And then I had yeah. my second baby, I had Parker and it was so much more peaceful. Hmm. Like I was so much more at peace as a mom. I remember like the first time I Googled something with Parker, I was like, that's the first time I've Googled something with Hudson. I was up 
every night Googling things like how long hmm. should they be sleeping? How often should they be eating? Like all these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then with Parker, I remember the first time I Googled something and I was like, wow. I haven't Googled something like in two weeks. That's amazing. Uh Like I've just been doing the things. And I felt like having that much confidence in my motherhood journey is what gave me the confidence to do other things because that's really... If like, you can be a mom, you can do anything. That's my dad. I was telling my dad, I, I got invited to this, um, to speak at this marketing conference. And I was like, I'm not really qualified for that. I mean, I'm an elementary education major. I made a photography business on the spur of the moment thing. Like, I'm not really qualified to do this. Uh-huh. And he was like, you're a mom. A mom could be a CEO of any company. Mm-hmm. You do so much. All the moms do so much. Mm-hmm. Any mom could be the CEO of any company. Mm-hmm. So... Anyway, having the, having a second baby and gaining the confidence from my second time around, um, I remember sitting there nursing Parker and just thinking like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to do more. I can take on more. And that's when I started my business. I was like, like, well, you have a baby in hand. You're like, I could do more. Yeah. Like I'm I'm (laughs) ready. I'm yeah. Like I, I'm good at this and I feel confident in this. Still obviously hard, still not yes, yeah. like, I don't know everything, but it was just so much more peaceful and I felt so much more confident. It gave me confidence outside of motherhood. And sure. then I was able to, and I like, I was so immersed in motherhood. Like I said, my social skills were deteriorating. I was not who I was before. Yeah. And so coming into that 2023 year to get stuff done, I pulled myself out of that and just was like, okay, like I'm ready to give more of myself. I've given a lot to my kids and now I think I'm ready to take on more than that. And I did. So yeah, you did it. Yeah. You jumped right in. Jumped right in, went all in. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, we were watching Survivor the other day. Do you watch Survivor? I don't. <laughs> I never have. It was like they were doing this competition. I didn't until I started. <laughs> I get really into these like reality game shows. I have a friend that's like super about it. Yeah, but they were doing this competition where they had to like carry water from a bucket, like cross sand and go back and forth for like hours and mm-hmm. hours. And it was these two guys. And I was like, why didn't they choose? Like they should have been like, who are the moms here? <laughs> to be like, Because they have it in yeah. them to be able to do this for 100%. hours and get it done. Absolutely. And I was like, is that sexist? I was like, but they chose two men and they failed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. And a mom could have really done that. They feel too. really bad, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all I could talk about was like, if it was moms. Yeah, I mean. They would have done it. I've done the double double kid hold whilst pregnant. I've done that. Mm-hmm. And I could have done the water challenge. Mm-hmm. Put me up for it. I would have mm-hmm. knocked it apart. Just like the mental abilities to just like persevere and yeah. be strong. Not knocking against men, but no, no, I we got agree. it. He was there for our childbirth, yeah, not, and he's like, "I'm that. not. It's not me." <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, childbirth is something. <laughs> Everyone always says it's crazy. They're <laughs> so not like, wrong. It, yeah, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's, you could just have the one, right? One little yeah, girl, just one little girl. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. No, and we love like she's amazing. Yeah. And I think a second one of her right now, if she was just like cloned at that fun age, it'd be like awesome. <laughs> but, but like going through all of that again is just I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's don't so know. daunting. But like I said, my experience was so peaceful for my second time around. And it'll be peaceful again for the third time yeah. around. <laughs> That's what we'll manifest for you. <laughs> I don't know about that. Because I'll have two of these other gremlins on the site. But mm-hmm. how old's the older one? He will be four in July. So we're like, boom, boom, boom. Okay. So maybe he'll be at like an age where he can like kind of help a little. Yeah, he's pretty helpful. He's he's pretty helpful. So it's like you had a good one and then a gremlin. (laughs) So it's like 50-50. It's a good gremlin gremlin. (laughs) Yeah. A good gremlin good. I don't know. This one's a girl. And Parker is my girl and she's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like. A good gremlin gremlin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think my girls are just gremlins, I guess. (laughs) I had someone at the grocery store come up to me. I had my two kids. And she said, she goes, man, you're just the cutest baby I've seen all day. And I said, me or my baby? (laughs) 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 She goes, oh, your baby, but you're cute too. And I was like, thanks. And I was like, she's cuter when her hair is done. And she goes, no, we love a feral child. (laughs) I was like, oh, (laughs) 
That's bitch. kind of offensive. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that about her, but okay. Feral old lady. <laughs> I should have come back and said, you look feral today. That is so funny. Enjoy your last days. Yeah. <laughs> so I was talking about that with our daughter. I'm like, we need to do her hair. She looks like a freaking crazy mm. child. It's like then, all from the Yes. Place. We were at Target the other day and the lady was walking by with her kid. And I was like, look, it looks like Eve's hair. We're not the only one. Yeah. And it's just like a crazy, yes. crazy kid. I like cut Parker's bangs and so they're like straight across and then she has this like and my husband's like it looks like she's wearing a football helmet of hair always do you um you know dumb and dumber yeah like yeah harry yeah i found a video of harry and it's like hey, literally it's eve's hair like, <laughs> the funniest thing yeah that's funniest thing they look pretty wild when their hair's not done no it's okay and then you look like, like don't mom. judge me. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't let me today. Like, my hair's not done either, yeah. so mm-hmm. we're even. But yeah, oh, they're so, so fun. Yeah, they she's really starting fun. to hold the camera now, so it's oh, just cute. scary because she's yeah. gonna drop. I'm it, like, so. that's my hard no. Like, oh, this <laughs> don't is what break my anything. life revolves around. Don't drop it. Yeah, my camera goes away. <laughs> yeah, my they're really interested in it when I bring it out. Have you gotten your kids one of those little ones? Those, no, but I've been you thinking should. about you it. We got one for Eve, and she. Barely gets the concept. But your four-year-old should yeah. get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fun. It's awesome. It comes with like a little SD card. And oh, the yeah. camera is, it sucks, but. <laughs> it's what you expect. It's enough. <laughs> it's yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah, I would love to do that because he does love taking pictures and he like, you know, his magnet tiles. And he's like, look, I'm like, mom, <laughs> my kid's both with magnet tiles. Yeah. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. But I should, t- I've been meaning to look yeah, into one that because I know he would it. love it. So yeah. do you have any advice for someone who's wanting to start their own business or pursue a dream? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's lots of things, you know, like there's lots of things that go into it. I think for me, a huge thing was, um, putting yourself out there in the community and, um, just finding a community and then what that community needs. So, um, with, my, so like I said, when I first started, I was like branding photography all the way and then branding branched into boudoir because I realized how similar they were just, especially if you're yeah, just working with women. Mm-hmm. And yeah. You're just hyping. It's just yeah. a hype session. Like mm-hmm. you're hyping each other up. It's super fun. Yeah. Um, and so with community, I start, I, 2023 was the year to get stuff done. Mm-hmm. My motto, mm-hmm. I joined the gym. I got a gym com- community and love those girls, Good girls, night fitness girls, mm-hmm. shout out to them. They're the best. Coach Brittany, the best, um, changed my life. And I feel like in addition to my motherhood journey gave me confidence, like, Hmm. so it just all these things stacking on top of each other to help me move forward in my business journey. So find those communities that you need in order to excel and then communities become clientele. Mm -hmm. So I've done lots of girls at the gym's (laughs) boudoir pictures and Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is I was reaching out. I um, Branding photography was my thing in the beginning. Still is. Um, just boudoir has kind of taken over. Um, but I was cold messaging women-owned businesses in the area constantly. Like, okay. Specifically women-owned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like small business owners. Mm-hmm. And I was um, reaching out. Hey, I do branding photography. This is my current um, deal that's going on. I would love to work with you when I first started out all the time, Mm -hmm. I was Mm -hmm. constantly doing that. I was going to craft fairs and farmer's market, um, talking to people. And then afterwards, Hey, I saw you at the farmer's market today. I'm a branding photographer. I'd love to work with you. Yeah. This is my deal. Um, and so putting yourself out there and doing those uncomfortable things that maybe like throwing the, the cottage, the party at the cottage, that was so out of my comfort zone. That's so scary. Oh, it's so out of my comfort zone. I am not like, I'm the youngest of eight kids. I'm not like a leader. And I don't remember how far into like owning the house did you have that party? I had that party May 11th and I closed on the house March 9th. It's like a month and a half. So yeah. like technically, Two months. yeah, no, I'm sure that was stressful because yeah. you hadn't even been doing photography for that long at no. that point. So yeah, no, just like to, to, no, yeah, I bet that to was. Like, here yeah. I am. Yeah. yeah, here I am, world. Yeah. It was really intimidating. <laughs> yeah. to, uh-huh. And like I said in the beginning, I was like, 15 people will come. Mm-hmm. I can make 15 people. Which come. would have been awesome. Which still. would have been great. Yeah. Still been great uh-huh. yeah. And yeah. so that was like putting myself out there to invite all these people over and host like. It's like reassured you were doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It was, it was really intimidating for me, but 
that was huge for my business and yeah. for the studio because no one knew what it was. And then everyone came to this huge party and then everyone was posting about it. And so putting mm-hmm. myself out there, joining these communities and finding communities for myself, um, yeah. so important. And the other, the other thing that I do is I, um, this realtor hires me every month and I go to these content and connect events and she invites a bunch of business owners and I do their branding photos. And so I'm constantly connecting with other Mm -hmm. business owners and just being a part of that community, I'm able to find more clientele Yeah, and able to connect, push myself, challenge myself. You know, I'm not doing the same. I'm not always doing photographer branding because I'm connected with all these other businesses. I get to push myself and be more creative with other types of businesses. And and then a lot of the times Mm -hmm. what happens is these branding shoots – I, you know, have my, they ask me about my work, they find my Instagram, whatever. And then they're like, oh, I did branding with you. I'd love to do a boudoir shoot with you. So you're constantly building on that. If you have these communities that you can put yourself yeah. into and reach out to, yeah, you find your clientele and you just build from that. And then from there, word of mouth yeah. and all that it's stuff. It's a good method. So, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Just finding your, your audience and finding your communities that you want to be a part of. And yeah. Yeah. And just do it. Like that was a big thing for me. It's just like, you just did it all in. Yeah. You did it. I'm committed. I'm all in Mm -hmm. and didn't look back. (laughs) And here we are. Yeah. Still going. Here I am. Yeah. Yeah. Just doing the things. Yeah. That was a huge one for me. There's something about make committing to something like that that makes it a little less scary than like the what if because yeah then it's more just it is what it is and now it's gotta make this happen yeah like it was kind (laughs) of like well yeah no plan b i'm in we bought the house so i have to do it like Mm -hmm. there's no turning back so it was like i'm doing it i have to do it well and now i'm like I just have to. Yeah. Like there was no other yeah. choice. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. it was like when we built this space and then the first day it was like done. We stood in here and we were like, well, now what? We are like, did we use it now? No, we were like, 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 photos. <laughs> and we'll probably find some clients. We just live here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we've just been building. We were like. Yeah. Okay, no, no, I don't know what to do. Now we have to advertise it. You have to actually it. work, dang yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're committed. You have the space and you're committed. Having right. a committed. space is huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. we talked about that. But having mm-hmm. a space is a game changer. It is for a game sure. changer. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on our podcast today. Where can people find you to look you up? Yes. Um, I mainly work on Instagram. Okay. My Instagram is parkerco.photography. Parker and Coda. And okay. uh, if boudoir is not your thing, maybe I'm not your thing, but I'd love <laughs> well, to Well, you would take pictures around. if they kept their clothes on still. Oh, uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I do. Um, you would allow that. <laughs> I do other things. I'm specialized in branding and boudoir, but I also love doing family photos and I found other things that I like to do too. Mm-hmm. So um, people don't frame their boudoir pictures as much as family photos, which is a precious feeling. So that's fun <laughs> yeah. to have people frame their family pictures that you've taken. Uh-huh. And I don't get that feeling room. from boudoir. So, yeah. <laughs> so I do love, yeah. Have people you walk do into that. a living room, like, wow. <laughs> My art. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so sunny. This is weird in that's here. That's your butt. <laughs> so, yeah. So I do, I do also love family photos because there's just a different. It's a different kind different of thing. dynamic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. You get your satisfaction from yeah. it all in different ways. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's all fun. Thank you so much for coming and yeah. chatting with us today. So great to meet you. Of course. And follow us, follow the podcast. Yes. Please subscribe. It means a lot. Is and that follow it? Parker yeah. Co. Photography. Make sure and yes. follow Parker and Co. Yes. Follow all of us. Yeah. You need boudoir. She's got you. Everybody needs boudoir. I don't offer male boudoir. Sorry. No doudoir. Oh. Dan will no do that one. Boudoir. I'm out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye.